legendary director J.J. Abrams arrived into Sydney at warp speed for the Australian premiere of his latest blockbuster, Star Trek Into Darkness. We hit the red carpet with the film's star-studded cast and crew, including Chris Pine, Zachary Quinto and Carl Urban. Star Trek Into Darkness is, is bigger and bolder and badder and faster and louder than the first. Three, two, one. You know, this movie was definitely, from the beginning and by design, a far bigger, deeper, better movie and story. Visually, it needed to match that. So we ended up building quite a lot of sets, exteriors, uh, and interiors, and it allowed us to, I think, do things visually that were pretty incredible, especially with the IMAX cameras. We filmed uh, nearly a quarter of the film on these amazing IMAX cameras with nuts resolution. It's crazy what you can see. So uh, I think mean, it looks like something you've never seen before. At the end of the first film, you know, there's Kirk. He got given the captaincy and, and uh, you know, perhaps it was, it was pretty early. He was a pretty young guy uh, and he didn't raise through the ranks as, you know, as one would, you know, traditionally do to get that role. So in this film, he really tests Kirk and the crew and, uh, you know, he really learns what it means to be a, a starship captain and, and the responsibility that that entails. I think in the first film we introduced the characters and in this film we really get to see the different colors of the characters in a family that is still trying to get to know one another and figure out how they all work together. Hold on! Captain, this ship will not fit. We'll fit. We'll fit. We'll fit. We'll fit. We'll fit. Don't be fit. I am not sure that qualifies. Things aren't going so well for the Enterprise crew at, right off the bat. And it only gets worse from there when uh, when Benedict Cumberbatch's character John Harrison shows up. So. It goes, uh, it goes pretty off course for everybody. It's a sort of scarier villain because he's someone you actually start to relate to at a certain point. He's not just an angry, vengeful, mustache twirler. He's actually someone that you, I think you feel for, which I think is a pretty extraordinary uh, statement about you know, what Benedict's able to do and make you believe that. The great thing about our film is that even though it is science fiction, it's a real action thriller that has very, very real and earthbound and stuff that we all know about this film deals with it just because it takes place in the future doesn't discount that star trek into darkness is in cinemas across australia from may 9 a new james dean dennis quaid tells cnn his at any price co-star zach efron reminds him of the late star of rebel without a cause zach's character and it, it uh, in, in, at any price reminds me, you remind me a little bit of James Dean, you know, especially in the silences, especially in the silences you can say so so much with, with the face when the camera lingers on him. Zach's acting inspiration. Zach Efron says his performance in At Any Price is based on a movie starring the iconic late actor Paul Newman. The young star says he's a big fan of Newman's work. I really love Paul Newman's movies. We, we For this film we watched HUD. I, I watched HUD a lot. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. It's been 25 years since the release of Beetlejuice, but Winona Ryder fans still can't get enough of the film. Ryder may be trying to promote her current film, The Iceman, but she says she gets stopped all the time because people want to hear her say three little words. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I mean, I sometimes at the airport, they will not let me through unless I say Beetlejuice three times. I'm not kidding you. That has happened more, more than like six times seriously like I have to say and, and like my plane is leaving and I'm like please and yeah but uh, it's 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 a good one I'm very proud of that GI Joe retaliation fought its way to a fifth place finish with 5.8 million the wacky comedy scary movie 5 earned 6.3 million good enough for fourth place Nine and a half million in box office proceeds put the prehistoric animated comedy The Crudes into third place. I love baseball. 42 fell to number two. The Jackie Robinson baseball biopic collected 18 million. Oblivion didn't set any records, but it proved to be Tom Cruise's best opening weekend in seven years and his fifth best debut ever after the Mission Impossible trilogy and War of the Worlds. The sci-fi flick premiered with 38.2 million.